Welcome to the first module of the course. My name is Pat Aaron. I'm a former Major League pitcher who played 17 seasons of pro ball and pitched over 2,000 innings. Additionally, I've been certified as a pitching coach at the Master Level 5 by the National Pitching Association. Played 10 years of winter ball in the Australian and Venezuelan leagues, and I spent a season in the CPBL in Taiwan. Played four years of the Czech Baseball Extra League and also coach the Czech and Hong Kong national team programs. And this webinar for coaches will introduce you to the methods for approaching blind and visually impaired people, as well as the fundamentals of base running and sliding. In this module, we'll take you through, first, the benefits of playing baseball for the blind and visually impaired. Then we'll go over how to approach and train blind and visually impaired athletes and cover the basics of the game. We'll talk about teaching and training base running. And to conclude, we'll talk about teaching and training the slide. We'll use photos and videos throughout the module, and there'll be a test at the end in order to progress to following modules. Baseball for the Blind has many social benefits for people with a visual impairment. Baseball for the Blind at all levels of play improve physical and mental abilities and the general health and well-being of the visually impaired. Baseball for the Blind helps develop new skills and reactivate abilities which may have been lost or diminished. Hearing refinement is a tool for orientation, movement, and controlling space, which is an essential skill in everyday life for the visually impaired. Baseball for the Blind is a powerful tool for physical and psychological rehabilitation with important benefits for self-reliance in everyday life. Baseball for the Blind enhances self-esteem and self-confidence. Baseball for the Blind emancipates players from the exaggerated protective control of families, school, and even doctors. And Baseball for the Blind offers an opportunity to further develop interpersonal relationships and friendships thanks to team life and social interaction. Baseball for the Blind is an integration tool because there are no age, gender, or nationality restrictions. And Baseball for the Blind is one of the few safe team sports for all. It's very important to remind coaches that they are primarily responsible for the safety of players. The way coaches approach blind and visually impaired athletes is fundamental. Those who are looking forward to training visually impaired people will have to take into account not only safety, but also other important concepts that should be considered during interaction with new players. You should consider that athletes who want to play baseball for the blind want to be treated like athletes without pity or paternalism. We should not be surprised if we hear athletes saying, let me see, and we should not be afraid of saying it. You will have to be very patient in the early stages of teaching, and most importantly, you'll have to explain verbally, accurately, everything that needs to be done. People who are going to learn the basics of baseball for the blind have probably never played a sport and even fewer have practiced a team sport. You will have to help them build their confidence and overcome their fear to move around in spaces freely on the field through audible signals while being blindfolded and without the guidance of a cane. Last but not least, trainers deal with players who are at different levels of awareness related to both understanding and implementing the lessons learned. The following video shows you how players may approach baseball for the blind for the first time. It'll give you a first impression of the game they are going to learn. This clip was made with boys and girls aged 9 to 14 years old at a summer camp of an institute for visually impaired people. You'll notice the difference between the gestures of those who played other sports and who are trying sports for the first time. It's very important to inspire players to continue with our sport, especially the less skilled. We need to make them understand that baseball can help them in developing important skills for their lives. This is our main mission. The video is in Italian, 
with captions in English at the bottom. Il baseball consiste nel prendere una pallina, sono ora. Le mazze, che ce ne sono alcune più pesanti, più leggere in base a qualcun altro della persona. C'è qualcuno che è mancino? Io. La, la parte di attacco è con la mazza. La destra. Perché ah, nel posto dove siete partiti, a fianco del posto dove siete partiti, una volta, e volta, tipo qua. tu parti da qua, qua sei a casa base. Questa è sei casa base, hai il primo per far punto. Ogni squadra fa un turno di attacco e un turno di difesa. <ride> nove turni di attacco e nove turni di difesa fanno una partita. E dopo siamo andati sul campo. Allora, questo è un campo da vento regolare. Abbiamo corso da, da una parte e dall'altra del campo, perché... Dovevamo prendere domestichezza col campo. Battitore! Mentre correvamo c'era un suono. Il suono si rilascia sulla sinistra. La battuta vera inizia a Correre liberamente per il campo, non ci sono ostacoli, è stato veramente bellissimo. Un po' difficile le prime volte passare da una base all'altra, bisogna infatti capire alla perfezione da dove viene il suono ed essere capace di orientarsi per non uscire dal campo. È stato bello che siamo stati tutti bendati secondo me, e c'è stato un senso di parità. Sì, ma comunque vede un minimo ha comunque un punto di riferimento. Sì, che ci hanno bendati, voi comunque è brutto da dire ma siete abituati. Noi invece è una cosa che ci fa strano. Tipo ci perdiamo, voi invece siete più abituati, quindi riuscite a farlo meglio. Noi invece eravamo stati tipo, oddio chi è questo? Chi è quest'altro? Io penso e questo lo do, lo dico perché lo credo e perché l'ho visto, è uno dei pochi sport che i disabili visivi possono fare, vi siete accorti che siete liberi di correre. E ho visto all'inizio persone che avevano addirittura paura di venire in campo, non si staccavano da noi e dopo due anni venivano normalmente in auto, da soli. In this image you can see where players Assistants and umpires are positioned on the field and will briefly explain how the game is played. Each team is made up of five blind players, one sighted player, and one sighted defensive player. The sighted defensive player and the sighted assistant also serve as base coaches at second and third base when the team comes to bat. The batter puts the ball in play by tossing it in the air and hitting it. In order for the batted ball to be ruled fair ball or in play, it must go beyond the string positioned between the defensive second base and the third base foul line behind third base. The ball must bounce at least one time before crossing the string, otherwise the batter is called out. The batter runner attempts to reach second base either by touching or running around first base. The batter runner is safe if he or she arrives on second base before the sighted defensive player positioned on the defensive second base catches the throw from a blind defensive player. The batter runner is out if the first base is not properly rounded or second base is not reached in time. The batter is allowed three swings and if he or she does not put the ball in play or fails to hit it on the third and final swing, it's a strikeout. A foul ball is always a strike. The runner on second base advances to third base and then to home plate on successive batted balls. Runners can leave second base or third base only after the umpire has called the batted ball fair. This occurs at the moment the properly batted ball crosses the string. Upon arrival at either second or third base, the runner must touch the base. The runner does not have to maintain contact. 
A run is scored when the runner on third base crosses the home plate imaginary line. If the batted ball in fair territory rolls beyond 225 feet or 68.6 meters, it is considered a home run. The sighted defensive player on defensive second base may feel the ball hit in his vicinity as long as he or she maintains contact with the defensive second base. Runners at second base, third base, and home are out when the sighted second base player firmly receives and controls the batted ball thrown from one of the five defensive players and prior to the batter runner reaching second base safely. Games are normally played in seven to nine innings. We'll now talk about how to teach baseball skills to our blind and visually impaired athletes. You need to keep in mind that traditional baseball fundamentals are also crucial in blind baseball. The only difference is that they have been adapted to make them suitable for the blind and visually impaired. These modules take for granted that players have sufficient athletic preparation to perform repeated movements to manage physical exertion and care for muscle strains. This is not the case, you should prepare through appropriate physical exercise and training. Preparation for the game must be made for youths and or adults who not only have never performed baseball gestures, in almost all cases, players have never seen baseball, but also have never attended group training sessions. It's therefore necessary to start getting them used to carefully following verbal instructions from coaches. These verbal instructions will later become an integral part of the game. And the game is also played using audible indicators. It's also advisable to make future players see the layout and learn the dimensions of the field using tactile maps and guide them step by step in order to get to know the obstacles they will encounter. Show them where the dugouts are and then the base locations and the running lanes that will need to follow for practice and games. You can start teaching the game using tactile maps of the field to familiarize players with base running and defense. When players first approach the game, they're usually given some tactile maps. The black parts are embossed as opposed to the white parts so they can be identified by players by touch. There are two kinds of maps, one with only the field and one with the players in position, so players can understand how the field is structured and where players are located on defense. We'll discuss now how to organize a training session. Initially, an individual and an organized training session on fundamentals is indispensable. Running, sliding, catching, Throwing and hitting drills must be taught and continuously reviewed as training progresses. Also, players should not be deprived of team practice and the joy of playing the game by building up significant technical abilities. We suggest you use the following pattern, individual training, group training, and friendly matches. Practice is usually divided into an instruction phase and a training phase. Coaches use descriptions and examples. But keep in mind that each coach should supervise a maximum of two players. Instructions describe a list of all the components which one after another build up sequentially and in a coordinated manner towards completing technical skills. While using examples, coaches make players understand the correct gestures. We'll see some videos in the following slides. In this video, we can see how coaches assume postures and or make gestures slowly. By touching the coach who is simulating the movement, the player will acquire the muscular dynamics required by the gesture. This is a passive approach. The player feels the stance, the position of the glove, the dynamics of catching the ball, and the coordination between the sound of the ball and the movement of the glove. We call this hand-eye co hand coordination. For our players, it's 
ear hand. Otherwise, it's up to the coach to guide the player's gestures using an active approach as seen in this video. The coach corrects the stance, the glove position, and the player's movements. And now we'll go over base running and the work of the offensive assistants who use clappers to guide runners around the bases. They use clappers in two ways. At the moment, the assistant takes charge of the runner. The second base assistant should start using the clappers at the moment the runner rounds the sound first base. The base assistant should start using the clappers after the umpire has called fair. The type of clapping the assistant must use should be rhythmical at intervals, not too close to one another. The clapper should be held at his or her own chest height. The assistant continues clapping while the runner is approaching the base and up to his or her arrival. When the runner is at a distance of four to six meters from the base, depending on the speed of the runner, after a single but very loud clap, the assistant should speed up the rhythm more and more and dropping while lowering the clappers down to the top of the cushion. In this video, you see how assistants use the clappers. Let's now talk about how to teach base running. After a warm up and stretching exercises, coaches should make players run 10 100 foot sprints, gradually increasing the speed. Sprints can also be executed by using the schemes presented in diagrams one and two from the following slides. Runners will get acquainted with how to do the base running they will need during the game. Running execution starts with medium intensity runs, concluding with high intensity final sprints. In this diagram, runners stand to the left of assistant CA1. This assistant has clappers and will call players in a fixed rotation. The assistant at CA1 will instruct players to run towards the assistant at CA2, who will direct and then lead them by using clappers. Once the runner has reached CA2, he or she walks to the back of the line of players waiting on the right side of CA2, waiting for his or her teammates to arrive. Once all the players have completed the first round, they will be directed one by one to run towards the assistant at CA1. This exercise may be repeated three or four times at the coach's judgment. This video shows how coaches following diagram one help players train for running the bases by following the sound of the clappers. Diagram two shows an evolution of the previous diagram. Runners, starting from, runners start from CA1, but rather than stopping upon reaching CA2, will round, run around the assistant at CA2, keeping her or him on their left in order to then run back to the assistant at CA1, who will guide them with the clappers. This run around the CA2 position prepares players for rounding the sound first base during the game. This exercise may be repeated three or four more times according to the coach's instructions. The recommended distance between the two assistants should be the same as the distance between two bases, which is 90 feet or about 28 meters. 
In this second video, we see runners practicing their running according to diagram two. Base running techniques follow three routes. Home plate to second base after rounding the sound first base second base to third base, and third base to home plate. In the first two cases, arrival takes place on a flat base with the following 15 by 15 by 10 inches, or 38 by 38 by 2.5 centimeters, and the base must be touched. In the third case, arrival occurs by crossing a 13-foot wide target line, as is about 4 meters wide. When you start teaching base running fundamentals, you can start with four different running exercises, always bearing in mind the athlete's skills and increasing the running speed with time. Home base to second base is executed by players who must run to second following the clapping sound. After touching the cushion, they get positioned behind the bag waiting to run towards the next base. In the meantime, they can hear the technical suggestions provided by the coach. Second base to third base is executed by the players who, waiting on second base, must run towards third following the clapping. After touching the base, they get positioned behind the bag, waiting to run towards home. In the meantime, they can hear the technical suggestions provided by the coach. Third base to home plate is executed by the players who waiting behind third base must run to home, crossing the home plate target line without any help but only remembering the play ball sound called by the umpire standing behind home plate. Players will first run to second base. Afterwards, with runners on base, everyone will act like they're in a game. This part is very important because they will get used to the sound of the first and the second and the set at the same time with that of the second and third base clappers. Running from home to second base corresponds to running from home base to first in regular baseball. Blind or visually impaired runners do not have to necessarily touch first base when they round it to continue the run towards second. They're not allowed to cut inside the bag without touching it, otherwise they're called out. The right-handed batter, positioned in the batter's box, is facing first base directly ahead. Moreover, the batter runner can find the position thanks to the base's audible signal. The batter will have to acquire the movements to execute after the swing in order to correctly run towards first base. He or she should start running with the right foot first. The left-handed batter once he or she finishes the swing, will find herself or himself naturally in, the, in position with regard to first base. The batter runner can follow the sound by his or her right ear. After the hit, the batter runner should start running down the lane by keeping the grass on the right. Should the batter runner feel the grass on the left, on the infield side, he or she will have to modify the direction by running slightly to the right. After 20 steps, the batter runner should run slightly to the right in the lane to make it easier to then turn towards the left after rounding first base in the direction of second base. Once the batter runner passes first base, the assistant on second base will start using the clappers. At that time, the batter runner should turn left by simultaneously twisting the trunk to the right in order to avoid slipping. He or she will then continue towards second base by following the sound made by the second base assistant. Here you can see a left-handed batter who, after hitting the ball, starts running towards first base following its sound. While approaching the base, he moves to the right in order to turn around the base and continue his running towards second base following the sound made by the assistant, ending up with a slide. Once the runner has earned second base, Runners should maintain contact with the bag, waiting for the umpire's fair call, which gives them the green light to proceed. The run is in a straight line, and the arrival is the same as the one on second. Runners must focus on the noise made by the third base coach, who 
was clapping the clappers to signal the running direction. Here the runner takes off from second after the umpire's fair call and reaches third following the clapping of the assistant who changes the clapping rhythm as the runner approaches the base. This runner reaches third base standing up without having to slide. Runners on third must focus on the umpire who stands behind home base before the hit. The umpire gives runners on third the location of the central position of the target line with the play ball call. After the play ball call, the batter will start his swinging motion. The right and left limits are six and a half feet, 1.98 meters, on either side of the voice of the umpire. If the umpire's fair call, the umpire's fair call gives them the green light to leave the base. The run is in a straight line, but not assisted. Runners must run within the running lane and eventually feel the grass to avoid going in the wrong direction. In order to score a run, they have to cross the imaginary home plate target line, but they do not have to touch home plate. When the umpire calls the runner out or safe, the runner must stop running as quickly as possible. If the umpire calls stop, the runner must stop immediately. Here you can see the view from third base with the assistant positioning the runner towards home plate. During the run, he realizes he's going the wrong direction by feeling the grass under his feet, and he suddenly changes his running path, placing himself in the correct position to cross the home plate target line. Notice the assistant behind the umpire. This coach makes sure the runner stops his forward motion before reaching the backstop. This video shows the runner coming home from third base, modifying his run by feeling the grass and finding the proper path to score a run. This time, the viewing angles from behind home plate. After teaching base-to-base -base running, you can place runners on each base simulating a game. Coaches act as umpires and clappers as assistants. The home plate coach shall call play ball when the assistant third sh on third shall call fair after a few seconds. The batter, after simulating the hit, starts running towards second base once he has turned around first base. The other runners shall start running upon hearing the fair call. Second and third base assistants shall you start to use the clappers like in a real game. This video shows a typical bases loaded situation with all runners leaving their bases after the fair call. You can see the third base runner moving towards home and the other runners reaching second and third following the sound made by the assistants. With regard to extra base situations, B4B slightly differs from regular baseball rules. Runners can continue running beyond the base previously achieved, second or third, only after the fielder has thrown the ball. In this action, runners are being physically helped by the second or third base assistant, both in standing up and running towards the following base. In their run from second to third, they are assisted by the third base coach who uses clappers. From third to home plate, they are directed only by finding their way around on the dirt running path. This video shows a simulation of an extra base situation with a runner going towards third base. Once arrived at third, after a few seconds, the runner is immediately directed towards home by the third base assistant. From third to home, the runner, must, runner is unassisted and he or she must feel the ground in order to keep on the right path. As in traditional baseball, runners can reach the base in three ways, standing, feet first or head first sliding. How do they know when to stop running or to start sliding? They run towards the noise made by the clappers of the assistant on the base. At about 20 feet from second base, they will hear the clapping start to become more rapid and moving down towards the bag on the ground. From that moment, they should quickly slow down and proceed in smaller steps of about 15 inches until they feel their feet touching the base. The rapid deceleration is enhanced by planting the feet down and transferring the body weight backwards. 
How do the runners choose between sliding, diving, or standing? When a blind fielder gets the ball and is about to throw it to second base, the sighted defensive player must call two, two, to help the fielder figure out where to throw. In this way, when runners hear the two, two call, they have an idea of the fielder's execution speed and they can choose whether it's necessary to slide or to come in standing up or to dive. Should they not hear the call by the sighted defensive player, they will slow down and get to the base without sliding. How do you teach sliding to blind or visually impaired people? We well, you know, normally use wet plastic cloth, 10 meters long and five meters wide, or folded cardboard to get started. Usually you use the folded cardboard in a gym and wet plastic cloth outside and on the field on sunny days. We recommend to encourage players to use the head first slide for extra safety of both the assistant and the player. Some players find the base easier by spreading their arms wide instead of using their feet. When you teach feet first sliding, have players sit on the grass in front of the wet cloth or cardboard with the right or left leg under the body and with their hands high behind to explain the position on the ground to begin the slide. Then after a short run up, have players land on the wet cloth or cardboard with their legs bent, which will help the sliding. And then gradually increase the distance and speed of the run. And when you teach head first sliding, put the runners on their knees in front of the wet cloth or cardboard making them stretch their arms forward, touching with a sort of slide the wet cloth or cardboard position in front of them. Repeat the same movement with runners executing the same diving movement towards the wet cloth or cardboard from a semi-upright position. You will then proceed to make the slide using a longer and faster run up to land on the wet cloth or cardboard, making sure that players start sliding by using a single leg push. In this video, you see how coaches teach players feet first sliding. A coach is watering the plastic cloth. In this way, players become familiar with the gestures, overcoming their fear of getting hurt. The coach has the player sit on the grass in front of the wet cloth with his leg under the body and his arms extended over, this, over his head. Now runners can start with a little run up and then they land on the wet cloth with their leg bent, which will help them to slide properly. Coaches will make players increase the distance and speed of the run gradually over time. Here you actually see a player using a feet first slide to second during a game. This shows how the runners are able to memorize the technique and reach this kind of level after proper training. In this clip, we have a demonstration of the head first slide on the wet plastic cloth. At the beginning, you can help them by calling out the command down at the right time in order to teach them the proper mechanics and timing. You can notice that the player is sliding using a single leg push. In this video, we have a demonstration of a head first slide on folded cardboard with the same technique used in the previous slide. The player who is doing the exercise is executing the slide for the first time in his life. This shows that by proper training, visually impaired players can also reach a high skill level. This is the next step after the one with the cardboard for the preliminary fundamentals. The runner is in a gym and he safely slides towards the base without losing speed with the help of the sound of the assistance clappers. Now you can see a real head first slide during the game. Practice and perseverance makes players execute the sliding technique perfectly. Here's a video produced by Massimo Sacares that shows the principal movements and plays for baseball for the blind. Blind was 
was invented and perfectly adapted for blind and visually impaired athletes by Alfredo Melli with a group of former baseball players from Bologna. The equipment used is ball with six holes with bells inside, baseball or softball bat, glove, clappers. Ready? Okay. 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 Begins the second attack for Germany. When they are at bat, players hit the ball and run to bases on a regular baseball field. They're held by a beeping first base and then they run to second and third helped by the rhythmic sound of clappers made by an assistant and finally they reach home plate and score a run. When at defense, they have to make the most of their hearing ability in order to find the ball hit by the opposing team. They have to stop the ball with their body and pick up the ball which they have to throw following the instructions by the sighted assistant on second base. The sport, adapted for blind athletes, is very easy and straightforward. They can hit, run and throw the ball safely and by doing so they're able to move around better and they are more independent in their everyday life. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, our lesson base running module for the technical course for coaches of baseball for the blind has come to an end. Please note that a second and third lesson on the topic consisting of a PDF document and a test, respectively, are also available on the WBSC Academy. We thank you for your attention and participation. We remain at your disposal to assist you in any way we can in order for you to introduce Baseball for the Blind in your country. Thank you, and in the name of the AIBXC and the WBSC, should you need further information, do not hesitate to contact the WBSC Paralympic Commission at paralympiccom at wbsc.org.